Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Bad for Your Health Entertainment. I am Tom, and joining me tonight is the lovely Marilyn Knapp, best known for her role in Alone, and can be seen in the upcoming feature, The Forest Through the Trees, with writer and director Jason Pitts. Marilyn, how are you tonight? Wonderful. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. And joining us once again is Mr. James Pasco, a comic book artist and art restorer, the number one art restorator in the business. James is best known for his comic runs at DC Comics with Azrael, Titans, Legion, and Batman Punisher, Lake of Fire. James, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing fantastic. Thanks for having me again. As always, I appreciate you two coming on, talking about old movies, and this is going to be a good one. Tonight, we're talking about the 1944 motion picture from RKO, A Night of Adventure. Perhaps the title is a little misleading, perhaps, but we'll get into that as the as this episode goes as, uh, carries on. A Night of Adventure is a feature directed by, sorry, directed by Gordon Douglas, starring Tom Conway and Audrey Long, Edward Brophy, and was based off a play called Hat. Uh, hat, coat, and glove by Wilhelm by, by Wilhelm Spire. The 1944 movie came out on June 2nd, and it's one of the classic RKO pictures where it's just an assembly line of movies. Tom Conway is a fantastic actor. We've, we've talked about him, and you'll see more of those episodes coming up. But James, I am going to start with you about this particular movie, A Night of Adventure. You are not keen or familiar with Tom Conway unless it was Cat People, which we right. will will be the next episode aired on the West Springfield Public Access Channel. But first off, what were your first impressions of A Night of Adventure? Well, uh, the first thing that came to mind uh, was when I saw that fantastic, this is an RKO radio picture opening, because every time I see that, it makes me feel good. Uh, I know there's going to be something worth watching when I see that. Yeah. So that, that was, you know, the initial feeling. Um, I, I had not seen this movie before. Uh, so just based on the title, I, th I was thinking, well, is this kind of noirish? Uh, is this going to be a dark thriller? You know, what, what, what lies in store for me? And about 10 minutes of the, into the movie, um, uh, Maybe a little more than 10 minutes, but the scene where, um, uh, actually it's the opening scene now that I think about it, where the couple, uh, the married couple meet in the nightclub, but they pretend like they're strangers. And then we realize, oh, they're actually married. And my first thought was, well, is this going to be kind of like the thin man? Wow. <laughs> and, you know, I thought, well, that's that's an ambitious thing to take on because I think those movies are great. Um, but soon I discovered, no, it was not going to be like the thin man. Uh, they did not have the kind of humor that they had in those movies. And uh, it was really going to be more of a courtroom drama. And so once I, once I stopped thinking about, well, you know, comparing it to the thin man, uh, you know, then I could, sort of analyze the movie for its own merits. And uh, and I think it was an interesting movie on its own merits. I agree. I think it's actually in the pantheon of Tom Conway's movies. Tom Conway is the older brother of Hollywood icon George Sanders. And uh, without giving a big history, too. you could see all oh, the resemblance is uncanny, if, especially yeah. when they stand next to each other. They only start in two movies together. To get, uh, they did The Falcon's Brother and... The Scoundrel, if memory serves me correct. I may be butchering the title. But yeah, th th there's just a clear similarity between Sanders and Conway. And it, Tom Conway was born Thomas Charles Sanders, but he lost a bet and changed his stage name to Conway. Wow. But he, he Tom Conway was a steady contract player at RKO from 1941 to ish all the way to 1946, cranking out pictures like you read about from the Falcon's brother to essentially the Falcon's adventure, which was his last one. Ten Falcon pictures. You got Night of Adventure thrown in there. Two O'Clock Courage, which was a movie I fell in love with the, in my recent watching. We'll get to that later. But Conway is a fantastic lead in these B pictures. Marilyn, what was your first impression of Night of Adventure? You had never seen this? No, I hadn't. 
Um, so uh, just seeing the, you know, the very first opening scene, woman sitting there, man comes up, starts talking. I'm like, I bet they're married. <laughs> <laughs> and so to me, it, it made me um, think, oh, this is going to be playful. This is going to be like a little fun. It's not going to be some uh, adventure movie or it whatever. Wasn't, no, it was not a night of adventure. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, there was you know a little driving scene and all that kind of stuff, but not. I mean, no, it was it was playful and it, and it was fun and and that's what I that's what I took from that opening scene is this is going to be a little bit different than I thought too. Mm -hmm. It started off very similar to a lot of the Falcon movies or similar RKO movies. Conway is his usual charming, suave, <laughs> debonair self. And yeah, that pencil thin <laughs> mustache. You know, he approaches the woman and he, she, this Audrey Long, who was a fantastic actress, she retired from show business in the late 40s. She was actually married to Leslie, uh, I'm going to butcher his last name. Catharis, it's the, the the gentleman who wrote the books for the saint. Oh, oh really? Yeah, she was married to that to him, and obviously George Sanders played the saint, as did Tom Conway on the radio. He replaced Vincent Price back in 1951 for a brief period of time. Very lovely woman, but yeah, it was a very playful movie. It's it's a, I didn't think this was going to be dark and. You know, film noirish and well, a little noirish, but little, um, a little bit. But I didn't expect it to be a double, double identity or out of the past. Mm -hmm. no. mm -hmm. If it would have been a noir movie, then he probably would have like framed his wife for the murder or something. <laughs> yeah, no one, in, no, or, 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 you know, to, to compare it to out of the past, would have been playing different games as the movie went along. Because I think, right. I think, I think out of the past is a fantastic movie. But we're talking Night of Adventure. Um, some familiar faces in it: the lovely Jean Brooks and I, I from the Seventh Victim, minus that bowl cut wig. <laughs> right. this, that wig, man, it's Seventh Victim. That is still that comes <laughs> up as a reoccurring joke, not just in in again uh, among film buffs, but among you and I, Marilyn. That. That bowl cut Mo Howard wig. <laughs> in this movie, you see her in her full, just normal self, and she's a very beautiful woman. She had a tragic ending herself, like most Hollywood personalities back in the, the golden age. She had a drinking problem similar to Tom Conway. Mm. And she died very, very young. But I, I do, I. I Usually when I see Conway as this debonair, suave self, you think he's either a detective or a psychiatrist, but then all of a sudden, lawyer. And he's one of the hottest lawyers in the country, a defense attorney. So I was like, oh, he's going to get everybody. He's going to save the day. You know he's the lead. But I do enjoy the chemistry between Conway and Long. And he's a man who is very married to his job. He, he takes it. His job was clearly number one to him yeah and you don't really feel bad for him when she leaves it's it's no you it's, understood I, yeah. you understand it completely james you want to run with that i i you see it clear as day yeah and and that was probably the moment when i realized okay this is not the thin man uh because <laughs> you know their marital relationship was totally different from the couple in this movie uh to me um, they didn't really have so much of the playfulness that William Powell and Myrna Loy did. Mm -hmm. um, no. it, it was more serious. Um, and I, I actually thought that her decision to leave because he wasn't paying enough attention to her was pretty, uh, it was a pretty dramatic uh, plot twist for 1944. Uh, that's that kind of came out of left field a little bit for me, and I was like, "Well, they're taking they're taking a chance here, you know." Back in those days, to uh, to portray a woman who's saying, "I'm not getting enough out of this, I'm out of here," you know, you didn't see that a lot. No, it was no. very taboo, especially amongst yeah. the producers' code, because they would never want to do anything that upset the religious folks of that era, right? Marilyn, what were your thoughts on the first act where we see Tom Conway's Mark Latham as a hot direct, a uh, hot 
hot defense attorney who is in a marriage of, uh, I don't want to say of convenience, but it's clearly a, uh, his marriage is second to him. He may have loved her at some point, but he he blows her off on his on her birthday of all days. Yeah, that was pretty awful. I thought, oh man, she's serious. She's going to leave you. You know, she <laughs> goes, well, I may not be here when you come back. I went, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <girl. laughs> Yeah, but, it was pretty awful. Hey, what was the guy's name? Steve? Oh, Steve. Steve, Steve, Steve good old Steve, Edward Brophy. Go tell her, Steve, you stay with her, make her laugh, you know. Right. Like, uh, uh, <laughs> nope. <laughs> he thought so highly of himself that nothing would ever go wrong. Right. That's right. just my interpretation of his character. Yeah. He's used to winning. Yeah. He doesn't yeah. know how to lose, too. That's the thing. No, no, he really doesn't, you know, and there was a, there was one line uh, where he finally got back from his trip to Washington, D.C., only to have Steve tell him, you know, your wife is gone. And, and the first thing he says is, oh, oh she, she was serious. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't think she would actually leave. He was like, he didn't know. He didn't think was. she would do it. No. <laughs> right. Well, that's funny because of the way he ends up leaving her. She was like, I'm not going to be here, Steve. Oh, can we just forget about this and move on? Well, that's a good oh, girl. No. Yeah. Oh, I just... hate that. That That's a good girl. Uh-huh. That's a good girl. I right. hate... Oh, yeah. I even wrote that down right here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, mm -mm. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you wrote it down because, Marilyn, when you and I have done other film, film reviews, you take the extensive notes. I took extensive notes on this one, too. But do you still watch movies twice if you're going to review them on any format yeah. or whatever, once as an actress and the other as a, as a fan? Yeah, uh, the first time is always just taking it in. Although I will take notes, um, especially if something strikes me. But then the second time, it'll be a little bit more, you know, critical or, you know, thinking about it more as an actress or just uh, even uh, looking at it compared to, uh, I guess what I do is I, I look at it and I go, no, you shouldn't do that. You should do that. What are you doing? And I'll actually talk to the TV. <laughs> you, you you look at it from a creative standpoint, almost on like how you would convey the story. Yeah, yeah. That's a sign of a creative person, right, James? <laughs> yeah, I, I find myself doing a little bit of that too. Uh, every time he would do something stupid, mm -hmm. uh, which was, which was a lot. Her, lot. I, I would be like, "Why are you doing that? Why are you saying that?" Uh, you know, there was there was one point where um, he was deliberately withholding uh, the knowledge from her that he had been, you know, in in the guy's hotel room. Uh, and that he knew how she died and and he he knew all of this, but he was deliberately not telling her that he knew. And I'm like, that's the way to get the relationship back together. You know, he wasn't not just lying he wasn't her. he wasn't just withholding that from her. He was withholding that from the court of law. <laughs> right. Oh yeah. And and but that's a different thing. You know, I, I sort of understand why he did it or why he chose to do that. But, you know, here he is trying so hard to get the marriage back together again. So what does he do first thing? Lie. He doesn't tell her the truth, and he <laughs> essentially lies to her. And that's not going to work. No, but I do I do like the performance of the Benny Soto character, who is the character that ends up luring him away from her because he's the star, the missing witness in one, in his in the Grand case, the Rand case. And yeah. he ends up doing, the, you know, they have the little, this little classic 1940s car chase where it's stock footage you know behind the projector yes <laughs> get behind slam on the brakes and that always makes me smile because that's straight out of the movie serials and films of that time you know today right, it could be cgi right. and you know you'd shut down a freeway for four hours uh, four hours each day to get the shot right but back then it was probably just done on the rko back lot or some mm -hmm. little side street up in the mountains there but i i, I I liked how Benny Soto then had to go to his boss and the boss is like, it's either going to be you or Latham. So you, right. so you take care of Latham. And then after that scene, I was kind of like, Oh, here comes the adventure. You know, it's going to be this like cat and mouse kind of lawyer outsmarting, not like, um, 
the game, you know, like with Michael Douglas or anything, just sort of like what's going right. to happen, you know, something weird like that. But the only sense of adventure I ever got from the movie was after she leaves and Tom Con, uh, uh, Mark and Steve are at the bar. And Marilyn, I don't know if you picked up on this. I picked up on it right away. The old double double joke that was from the Falcons' adventure when they're sitting no, at the. Oh, I yeah. I, I picked up double on that double double, yeah. double, double. and uh, the joke James is in the nineteen forty six RKO movie, The Falcons' Adventure, with Tom Conway and Edward Brophy as his lackey, Goldie. Um, they're they're uh, on a train. I'm trying to trying to remember the exact scene. They're in a train, and the bartender says, "What will you have?" And the Falcon says, "Bourbon and water, please." And Edward Brophy's character says, "Make mine a double double." And everyone kind of turns and looks, and they're like, "Yeah, they're both for me." So I didn't know that that was a recycled RKO gag. Perhaps for, maybe it wasn't done in another movie, but it was in this movie with the two leads. Yeah. So I I kind of chuckled when I saw that. Nice to see that they, cool. they they pay homage to themselves. And I'm sure a gentleman having a double double back in the day was quite funny. I think it would still be funny. <laughs> 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 but but during the scene where they see Tony Claire with Erica, and you actually see uh, Mark's character dejected. You know, hey boss, ain't you gonna go after him? I don't know if I have the right to. Mm. Right. And Steve's the one that figures. On. Yeah, and and Steve's the one that figures out that it's an artist by simply going to the uh, the coat woman, the coach. Yeah. Right. The coach. Yeah. Hey, isn't that the second baseman? Right. No. Yeah, I, th I thought that was cute. Steve, Steve's always Edward Brophy's characters in some of these movies looks like the not the brains, but definitely the the one who does the heavy lifting. Right. Fine actor too. I saw him in several uh, Hugh Beaumont B movies from the early fifties, but mm. that's those are those are another stories for an, another day. But then uh, Steve, you meet. Go ahead, James. Oh, I was just going to say the the Steve character was actually one of my favorite characters in the movie. Same. I, I found him to the Steve. Yeah, I loved Steve. Yeah, uh, I I found him to be uh, very amusing and engaging throughout the movie. Yeah, yeah. And he he brought the comedic, the light, some of the lightness to the film. Yeah, and definitely. it needed that. It really needed that. Because if it didn't have that, it would have been boring. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know the. Uh, I, I thought there once they got once it became a courtroom drama, uh, one of the interesting things to me that kept my attention going was that our lawyer friend, who is so cocky about his abilities in the courtroom, uh, here he is uh, trying to get you know his wife's boyfriend off on the murder rap, but. Knowing all the while knowing he was the one in in the dead woman's you know or in the uh, in the artist's apartment where the dead woman was killed and he's so cocky he's so confident in his, in his abilities he tries no on that glove he, he tries on the coat and the hat and says could it have been me you saw i mean he was taking massive risks in the courtroom uh but but it just tells you something about his character. He believed that he could pull it off, and he did. And he did. Yeah. And his wife was okay with it. And his, she was okay with it. She, they saved oh, Tony. Part, yeah, that part I didn't like. <laughs> what because I, I know? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't know. Maybe you could uh, follow up on this, Marilyn. But the character, her character that they established throughout the movie, to me, is not the kind of character where she would just say, oh, well, everything's all right, honey. Let's go back home now. Right. Um, he, she would have been the one to stop him from going in for a kiss, I feel like, at the very end. Because right. yeah. one of my issues with the, with the movie is its length. Quite frankly, I feel like it ends before there's any real resolution at the end with some of these other characters. When he says, right. oh, I'll have Benny Soto sweating so much that he'll he'll tell me everything about the head boss. And I was like, well, I'd like to see that because that'll help what's going on in Washington. <laughs> right. right. Yeah, exactly. Right. No, there were there were at least three or four, if not more, significant plot points where at the end of the movie they they just kind of wrapped them all up by having him say, Oh, I'll take care of it. 
Yeah. Don't worry, I'll take care of everything. Yeah. And then end of movie. I, I, I could have used a little more than that. I could have used a little more of the movie to kind of, I would have liked to have seen the, the main baddie take the fall. Because right. Benny yeah. Soto was just a lackey. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Who's going to be sweating in court to perjury. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was saving his own skin almost at the cost of his own skin by lying in the court. Yeah. And, or and I'm trying sure. to cover himself. Right. I'm not sure that character was going to be around very long to face a perjury charge. I think the bad guy would, would probably... <laughs> no, it's sad. He was a fine actor, Russell Hopton. Uh, Hopton, and uh, tragically, he died not too long after this movie. And I could not find a cause of death, which I was kind of curious about when I went through everyone's sort of IMDb, and mm. you know, I just it was like, huh, he passed away at, uh, at a tender young age of forty-five. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I think what makes it interesting from a courtroom drama, after we, well, after. Uh, Mark goes to Tony Claire's apartment. We actually meet Tony Tony's wife, played by the lovely Jean Brooks, and there is a struggle because she is so drunk, which is ironic. And she she uh, has a gun. Uh, Mark is being tailed by Benny because Benny has to cover his his tail with the main boss, and a struggle breaks out for the gun because Mark obviously doesn't want Tony dead or anything have to happen to his wife and there's this little struggle the classic 1940s no 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 well all right and then the gun goes off accidentally and gene brooks's character is killed yeah uh, <laughs> yeah it was kind of dramatic that kind of like uh, and then just kind of falls over but but um right. it then shifts to the courtroom drama because the husband tony claire is the prime suspect and as you said james Mark knows he's the man. He could easily get him off, get him off of the murder charges. But he he knows that there's a cat and mouse game because of the way the apartment was left. And that was another one, right. as you said, a key point. No, we didn't know that as a viewer that he knew that. Not till the very end, yeah. Not until the very end where they tie up all the loose ends. But that would have been nice to know because we would have known he had an ace up his sleeve. Right. Yeah. But yeah. Although. You know, you could make the case that our not knowing um, increased the amount of tension and mystery until the very end, because I know I was thinking, well, what the heck is he up to? You know, yeah. when during the courtroom uh, part of the movie, uh, you know, is he trying to get the boyfriend actually to be convicted so that he has free reign back with his wife? Or is he trying to get the boyfriend actually acquitted? And if so, how is he going to do that and not hang himself? Because right. I think point, I think he was going for it on the fly. He was he was going to save himself first and foremost, I think. But when he had a chance, when he saw Benny Soto, he said, "I've got a chance here to connect all the dots and get everyone." The, the the actor who I really feel like carries the courtroom drama is the district attorney Branson character because he's the one handling a lot of the dialogue with the acting. And say what you want about this movie, it I thought it was well acted. Mm -hmm. Everyone had everyone played their part to a T. Yeah, yeah. including yeah. the nightclub singer. Oh, I loved her. Oh yeah, oh, do you? Was really my yeah, she was really <laughs> she was she was fantastic. Yeah. She was fun, and she you know that whole the whole. Thing. She yeah. stole the whole courtroom scene. She did. The whole courtroom scene was, awesome. she stole the show in that scene. Well, I do you swear, yeah. I let it slip every once in a while. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, hold this. <laughs> and and they would show every guy on the jury laughing, you know, and uh, and then there was that one uh, older woman in the jury yeah. who was very stern looking. And, and every time the guy next to her would laugh, she would give him those evil eyes. I know. Right. I was like, are they married? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. And you see that you see that gag in some of the three stooges ones. I know it was that was done in disorder in the court, one of the famous stooges shorts, but like it's you could turn a courtroom drama into funny, soft, light comedy with that. And I feel like this movie definitely needed that light hearted comedy. Mm-hmm. And the judge, yeah. the, the the judge was just so not entertained by any of it. No, right. no. <laughs> yeah. 
but uh, uh, as the as the courtroom progresses, it does get a little interesting with the coat and the gloves and all that. Well, how long have you worked in the glove industry? Oh, I've worked in the glove industry for twenty years. It fits this. It fits Tony Claire like a like a glove. And he, we we have established that he does not drive a car. That is going to be established. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, that glove yeah. expert was kind of ridiculous because. It's like, well, is he the only person, uh, you know, in the United States that the glove fits? Yeah, and, he's and the only one that the, in the city that they could get. Why, this is a common glove. You can get this in any department store. I make the right. specialty gloves. I'm like, <laughs> okay. I don't know how the play is. I, I would be very curious to read the original play, Hat, Coat, and Glove, just to see if there, there were these lighthearted uh, comedic bits. Mm -hmm. Right. You gotta love these older movies that tell a story, a, a condensed story, in about an hour. James, you, I, you had said to me in a in message that you were surprised at the length of this movie. What was it about the length that surprised you? Was it about the story beats, how you wanted more, or was it just how you were like, oh, that was only 60, 61 minutes? Well, initially, I was surprised that the movie was so short, and I, I sort of forgot about. Uh, you know how they they made a lot of shorter movies during that time period uh so it caught me a little bit off guard that they wrapped everything up so quickly uh and i'm like oh wait is it's over already um yeah. and like we discussed previously i could have used a little bit more of the backstory being wrapped up at the end um but one thing i will say for the the brevity of the film is that i liked the unusually fast pacing uh, for movies of that era. Same. Uh, so often, you know, I I find myself watching not just movies of that era, but uh, TV shows from like the 70s or 80s. And the pacing is so different than we're accustomed to today. Uh, there'll be, a, you know, like that chase scene with the cars. Yeah. You know, if, if that would have been a TV show in the 70s, that chase scene would have lasted about three and a half minutes. And we would, the camera would show the first driver and then they'd show the second driver and then back to the first driver and back to the second driver. And, you know, we're driving, we're driving, we're still driving. Establishing shots, you know, yeah. Right, right. But in this movie, everything just clicked right along, you know, very, uh, very quickly. And that, kept my interest in the movie definitely at a higher level do you think a lot of that do you think a lot of that is is prevalent today though like let's say if this was remade today it would be stretched to a two two hour 15 minute movie the car chase would be that the, the courtroom drama would be like its own episode i just feel like that like you said the pacing the fast-paced nature they shot it very quickly probably on 18 days today it would probably be you know uh, a, a Three month shoot. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Marilyn, what yeah, do you think about no, the pacing of this picture? Um, I thought it I thought it was fine. I think um I think because in the beginning I could tell, okay, this is gonna be fun. I mean, this is gonna be, you know, um playful and so having it move on and you know, pretty quick and just you know, Tom Conway being Tom Conway. Tom Conway. This, yeah, and um, the, the the quick, uh, interesting aspects about him leaving his glove, which irritated me. So <laughs> much. And uh, but it it was a a lot of fun. I think that it clipped along like it did. Uh, but I I do agree that I would like. Because at the end, when he was like, well, I'll take care of it, you know, yeah. it'll be fine. And then we'll get all those crooked politicians or whatever. And but I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> what about the bad guy over there? <laughs> you know, I was like, right. Um, OK, well, it's Tom Conway, so we just have to trust him, you know. He had a way about yeah. it. Was yeah, he don't worry about it? Yeah. Was he was he limited, Marilyn, in your opinion? Limited as far as what he could as, actually as, do as an know? actor. Yes, yeah. <laughs> but you know what? I hope that he had fun with it too. You know, 
And as long as you're there and, and having fun and, you know, just go with it and working, working and working, working, but having a good time at the same time. If he was, if he was doing that, I think that's fine. Yeah. 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 A lot of the Tom Conway movies of our, at RKO, he's the same self confident, debonair, yeah, suave. Yeah. I mean, it, it's the Tom Conway, it's the Tom Conway formula, and there's nothing wrong with it. I've grown, yeah. I've grown to love it as I've gotten a little bit older. Where I was like, maybe when I was younger, I wouldn't have appreciated it, but now it's sort of like this guy kicked this guy this guy kicked it into another gear when he had to and i love the mustache i always love how you mentioned the pencil thin mustache no, it's, it's and then, perfect it's it is perfect it's perfectly him but in in this um uh, in this movie uh when the reporters were around you know i kept yeah. going oh that guy's got the same mustache that guy's got the same mustache you know and i know it's yes. like you know the the era, the you know, the, right. the hair, everything. Tony, Style, there's one, everything, yeah, yeah. There's one scene where Tony Claire and Mark are sitting next to each other, and I'm like, they look like brothers in a way, <laughs> or cousins. Be. The the hair and the face, you know, just the the yeah. look that that 1940s, right, gentleman right. look. Yeah, right. That's one thing that I love like? about these films so much is the look of yeah. people. They're so stylish. They're so, um, wow. You know, it's just yeah. beautiful, you know. And I kept looking at the hats, like her hats, you know. And they were all, like, big or the, what is that, the uh, pillbox? What is that called? No, oh, the pillbox hats, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then the big one, I was just like, oh, mm -hmm. I would love to wear stuff like that. <laughs> well, you know. Only the faces really change in some of the movies with the the storytelling. It's just the names, the story, the the and the the wardrobe. Wardrobe, yeah, yeah. And they always do. The, the, go ahead, James. There famous, sorry, wasn't there a famous wardrobe person named Edith Head? Am I remembering? Her oh career? my gosh, Correct. she is the ultimate co costumer ever. Yeah. She did, like all of the like Hitchcock stuff and right, right. anything with Audrey Hepburn in it and way back then. I just every time her name splashed across the screen, I went, Oh, this is gonna be good. It's gonna look good. Eat it, eat it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's it, the ones the one scene kind of made me laugh for a minute though, when uh when uh Tom Conway found out where his wife was living in her new place. And he just drops in on her and she answers the door and she's got the hat and the dress and the heels. She's dressed, and yeah. She looks <laughs> like she's nice. going to the opera, but she's just hanging around the house. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was hilarious. I thought it was funny how he tried, the character tried to, I'm going to listen to you and I will devote all my attention to you. And as he sits down, he goes, what's this? And she starts talking and he's like, oh, I know. The, the buffalo cap and you... How many he nights did, did go ahead, Marilyn? He didn't understand any of it, and he had no, no, no. interest in it really. No, and you can no. just tell that his eyes glazed over, and you know, yeah. he made an attempt. <laughs> he tried. And how many nights yeah. do you think she sat there listening to him talking about, well, he's going to get off on this case or this technicality and all that? Well, that's <laughs> fine, dear. You know, things like right. that. That, right. that, that um, I don't want to say June head. just yeah. nodding her head. That yeah. that almost June Cleaver mentality. But <laughs> yes. I enjoy I enjoy the movie. I I enjoy the the simpleness of it. I enjoy how yeah. the fast paced nature of it being made. I enjoyed I enjoy these B pictures. <laughs> yeah, they're fun. Would I you guess. guys think would 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 uh would you guys think that it would be fair at all to say that Tom Conway as far as, you know, the debonair dashing sort of character uh is kind of the B movie version of George Sanders? Like is George Sanders just more debonair, more yes. dashing, more sophisticated. I get that feeling. Hundred percent. I yeah. I Conway think is... George. I think George was a fantastic actor, as he rightfully was, winning the Academy Award in nineteen fifty one with All About Eve. 
but I just think he had a dryness and a wit about him. Yeah. Who was it? I think it was and no, it was um Jane Randolph who said Tom is as warm and friendly as George as is cool and uh debonair. Mm. Yeah, I, I do agree with you. I think Tom was the B movie George Sanders. And I, there are some movies I've seen with Tom Conway that I don't think George could have done given his strengths or lack thereof. Yeah. Well, in a, in one of our previous uh, episodes, Tom, uh, we talked about the Kinks song, uh, Celluloid Heroes. And Went and listened that, to it after you told me about it. Oh, did you? Well, you I did remember that there's there's a lyric in that song that goes, if you covered him with garbage, George Sanders would still have style. And it's so he, true. He had a way about him and not many people, yeah. male or female, could carry that way. And George Sanders, for better or for worse, he carried that he carried a, he had that way about him. He did. I'm reading his autobiography, actually, right now. Interesting. It's it's not a page turner like I thought it would be, but it's a page turner regardless because of how he approaches how he approached life. He obviously took his own life in 1972, but he he just as I just said he had a way about him. <laughs> Perhaps if we review a George Sanders movie in the future, uh, anyone I'll watch, even if it's all about Eve. Quite frankly, the movie where he won the Academy Award. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You all about Eve? Mm -hmm. Put it in the list. There you <laughs> go. All about okay. Eve. Mm -hmm. And that when he won the, no, and when he won the Academy Award for that, this wasn't the the era of uh, big time speeches or anything like that. He just simply took the Academy Award, bowed, and went off the stage. Oh, fuck. classic. <laughs> oh my gosh. Exactly. Classic. Wow. None of that. He didn't, make, he didn't need to make a speech. You know, he had uh, a presence. Exactly. Like, what, was, what was that line from uh, uh, where, where Nora Desmond says, uh, uh, we didn't, we didn't need, uh, we didn't need dialogue. We had faces or something like that. We had, you know, I heard Steve McQueen say that about some of his movies, the great iconic Steve McQueen, where I forget what movie it was. I think it was Sand Pebbles or Bullet. They had scenes written where Frank Bullet would would say something, and he would look at it and he just simply said, "I'll say it with my face." Yeah, I'll say it with my eyes. I'll lis I'll listen with my eyes. Right. Today you would actually need all that explanation and. Right. I just feel like there's too much. Less is more. Uh, put that on my tombstone. Yeah. I really feel like less is more is, is uh, one of the mantras I live by. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Not, nothing will kill a picture faster than too much exposition, right? Exactly. And I feel like these movies, like Night of Adventure, it's the perfect amount. And even if it's not a great movie, I would not. I would not say this is a like a fin this should not have won the academy award or anything like that or, or yeah. whatever you know shout out to the gentleman who put the to the channel that put it on youtube because it was, that's the only way to find this movie hollywood classic movies thank you that's all i'm yes. gonna say thank you uh subscribe to that channel actually after watching this movie i was like oh he's got they've got some good stuff on this channel mm. i'll go down the rabbit hole one of these days <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, nothing kills a movie or anything. Marilyn, you know it from the from the film world. James, you know it from the comic book world and the art history. You've you, you tell me you've seen comic books that have just the whole speech have like these huge soliloquies while you're trying to ink and draw it, and you're just like, well, how the hell am I going to do this? <laughs> sometimes you can't. You know, sometimes you you just have to, you know make stuff up as you go along that'll fit because there there have been certain writers over the decades that especially earlier in their careers thought they were writing a novel uh, or maybe they wanted to write a novel uh, but it was only a comic book <laughs> and like you say you, you'd have a you know you'd have a panel like that and that much of it would be words uh, 
it, it is, as has been said many times, a visual medium. Yeah, and you're trying to somehow get Batman's cowl, and it's like, oh, I, the, the thought bubbles or whatever, the, right. the cowl's gone in this page. <laughs> it's just right, <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. But overall, Marilyn, how would you rank A Night of Adventure, scale of 1 to 4? How everyone says 1 to 10, but I, it's like, I feel like 1 to 10 is just like, there's more room for interpretation. Or just how would you rank it on a grading scale? I give it a B. A B is a B. Yeah, I mean, um, I enjoyed it because it was fun. Um, and um, two and a half. Fair. James? Is that fair? Two and a half. Okay. Uh, in the, uh, I think it was the 80s, there was a, there's a local uh, newspaper here called the San Francisco Chronicle and they used to have a movie review section uh, every Sunday and they didn't use stars or anything like that they used a graphic of a little man sitting in a, a, a movie theater seat and if if the little man is jumping out of his seat then it's like a five-star movie or if the man is just kind of sitting there placidly maybe it's a three out of five uh, and sometimes the seat is just empty, and that's a horrible. <laughs> thing. Um, so if I was using uh, if I was using the little man uh, technique, I think I would probably say um, he was sitting there, but with a smile on his face. Oh, that's so. Nice. There, there are like some that. parts of the movie that I that I liked a lot, yeah. uh, but there were some parts of the movie that I thought were we could really have used some fixing up. So. Yeah, you know, maybe three out of five stars. Yeah, two and a half, three. It didn't. Ch it's, it won't change your world. Good to talk about. Good to have a good laugh, but it yeah. didn't rock my world by any stretch. No, and and it was only an hour, so you know, like an episode of television. You know, those B movies of the '40s just turned into the television filmmaking, the television process overnight. You know, and, and it's you know, I love the television of the '50s, but. I think this would have made a good like TV episode, TV movie, you know, movie of the week type. Yeah, it it, it had that flair to it. Yeah, yeah, and and characters like the Steve yeah. character, you know, he's he's sort of the the nutty sidekick to a lot of TV shows, right? Yeah, there were a lot of characters like him in TV shows, and a lot of the fun. and a lot of those writers and and directors of the seventies and the eighties. Had to get inspired by the projects of the 40s, 50s, and 60s. Sure. So I could see how this left its impact on. It, I'm not saying it's a trailblazer, but it was a, it was a rock along the trail. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's perfect. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but that that's my thumbnail. I'm like, why'd you pull that one out of man? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, we're not going to part ways just yet, but I got to know, you know, you two have been so gracious doing these film reviews. You know, we did They Live about a month ago and, and Marilyn, we did The Brain That Would Not Die. I don't want to be, I don't want to keep picking. The Brain That Would Not Die. Saw it actually, I saw it actually on a bargain DVD. <gasps> I did. I saw it and I was like, it looked like it was made from a printer in 1983. It was like, it was like just so compressed, you know, like where like the image was just, it didn't look good. It was the one of the woman with the head kind of like with a smile, you know, that sadistic <laughs> smile. But but we had all of, we, we have all about Eve. I'll ask Marilyn, what what's one movie you'd like to review again going forward? Is there one that like just screams? I want to talk about it because I do like your posts on your social media that you that you watch. Oh, do you? Oh, okay. yeah, of course I do. Okay. Oh, um, I follow both of you. Um. Actually, there's a whole bunch, um, uh, but truth be known, I'd love to do my favorite movie in the whole world. And, and that is? Jaws. Jaws. Yeah. Did it, I did it a couple of years ago. <laughs> Old enough, though. Oh, did you? Okay. I did. I don't mind doing it again if that was the question. I, I, that's my favorite movie. I could talk about that all night long. Jaws. Yeah. Oh, interesting. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I can't help it. It's, I mean, it's a little bit of everything. You know, it's horror, it's adventure, it's comedy. There's even a little romance thrown in it. 
that Brody's a little bit, <laughs> just a tiny bit, it's just a sliver of romance in right. that movie. <laughs> so it's it's uh, yeah, it's it's something I was 15 years old when I saw it, and it made such an impression on me. And every time it's I come across it, I watch it every time. Yeah, Without James it. is. The is there a movie you'd like to revisit? Your They Live suggestion, yeah. I, I truly love. I love that, too. Yeah. Loved They Live. Mm -hmm. Well, that's uh, now the pressure's on. Um, <laughs> you know, I I like so many different kinds of movies that are, that are uh, so unique from one another. Um, it's really hard to just sit here and come up with, you know, one that's like, like I can't. I can't do what Marilyn did and say this is my favorite movie of all time. I know because there are so it's many tough. that I love, if for wildly different reasons. Uh, some some of them are really really good movies, and some of them are really stupid. But I love them anyway. <laughs> yeah, they have uh, they resonate with you, and that's what I love about film. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't matter what it is; the language of film will resonate with you. Will, will resonate with someone somehow somewhere. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, I can't, you know, I can't like see a news story or anything these days without thinking of a movie like Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. Oh, great movie. Uh, yeah. You know, and that's a great movie. Uh, yeah. On the other hand, um, I went through a fairly lengthy uh, process where I was really into zombie movies. And, really? Uh, yeah, and, and there aren't too many zombie movies that are like really good movies, but but they, there are a number of them that are really entertaining. Are are you a are you a night of the original Night of the Living Dead? Not so much. I appreciate it. There there are certain scenes that I appreciate about, about that. Like uh wasn't there a scene in that where uh, it took place in a shopping mall, a deserted shopping mall? That was Dawn of the Dead. Oh, that was oh, Dawn of the Dead. Dead. Okay. Yes. I love that one a lot. That was a great scene. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I think some of my some of my all-time favorite zombie movies uh were the ones with the talking zombies. Return of the Living Return Dead. Return of the Living Dead. Return of the Living Dead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I I I I cannot tell you what a kick I got out of seeing that movie for the first time. Yep. The idea that they gave to zombies speech and <laughs> consequently personalities and you know, man. and desires and and i just thought it was a hilarious movie so you know not a good movie but a hilarious movie a hilarious movie yeah we had shawn of the dead when i grew up and i thought shawn of the dead was just out of That's this world weird. fantastic yeah. coming out at that time when the remake of Dawn of the Dead and then Romero was doing Land of the Dead, which I hated Land of the Dead when I first saw it. But I saw Land of the Dead as an adult and I was sort of like, ah, and I get it now. He's slowly integrating personality and and it was sort of that pre, I don't want to say Walking Dead, but it was that pre-Walking Dead type zombie thing. Right. Uh, not a fan of the Walking Dead. I never was. I, I hate that. No. I, I know, Marilyn. I know. I want to like black. Uh, I want to like. <laughs> that's the thumbnail. Don't 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 go all alone on me. I, you know I don't want to end up by the well with you. But <laughs> I, just, I was never a fan of the comic book nor the television oh. series. Just wasn't. Mm. I'm sorry. And I'm in the minority on that one. And I, you know, I guess I got to stand there, kind of like Romero zombies. That's me. Yeah. Or 28 days later, when when zombies started to run, I was kind of yeah. like, God, oh, come on, man, you make it, you're gonna scare me now. Come on. I know. I don't <laughs> right. Like the ones either. Right. That's scary. Mm. Uh, another kind of horror movie that I really appreciated. Well, appreciated might be too strong a word. Uh, <laughs> I thought it was. I thought it was funny in the sense of uh, so over the top in places. Uh, I could not believe that they went where they went. But it's called Reanimator. Oh, with Jeffrey Combs. With Jeffrey yeah. Combs, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I, I, I think that that's just one of those movies where I was like, I can't believe they just did that, you know. But they <laughs> did. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a minute since I saw Reanimator. There's like a what are there four, five of them? Yeah, I don't think I saw any of the sequels. Just the first one. 
I know there's Bride of the Reanim Reanimator because you know everyone had to have a bride at one point, Bride of Frankenstein, <laughs> Bride of Chucky, you know, right. which was funny, but but yeah, Reanimator. Yeah. I, I went down the rabbit hole with the George Sanders Saint. My wife and I, Chelsea and I, watched a bunch of them in uh, over the holiday, uh, over um, January break, and I, I'm looking for the next thing to to dive into. So, yeah, Z zombies and Jaws. I, I like that. Yeah, I mean, any horror movie, I'm here. Believe right. me, that's you my know, favorite genre. I yeah. Mean, uh, yeah. horror you can get away with telling a lot of good stuff but you know Marilyn it, you, you just re, re made the memory fire up some neurons for a second there was I'm not opposed to doing Jaws again I did it a couple of years ago yeah. but there was one movie review I did and unfortunately I had to do it alone because of scheduling and I don't mind talking alone I can chat anyone's ear off I could chat the internet's ear off I can chat anyone anyone's ear off for a few minutes but there was one hour-long horror movie that i saw in my archives and i was like i think marilyn knapp would appreciate this it was a 1958 movie called blood of dracula was it a hammer that, movie it was not a hammer movie it was an aip uh, movie american international pictures and uh, it's about it's about uh, a girl who is in a broken home the father remarried a younger woman and they send her off to an all-girls school and it starts off sort of like your classic all-girls school they're out to get each other but they form this sort of sisterhood and then i think it's the psychology teacher has this mysterious gem that gives her the power to 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 to, to brainwash those who are strong-willed or weak-minded it's been a, it's been a minute since i've seen okay. it yeah but she turns into this this vampire-esque murderer and if you google it and see the image it might you might see it but oh yeah it's one of those like if you love horror the, mm -hmm. that era of horror where it's kind of b-ish you know like that daughter of dr jekyll that john agar type horror where oh yeah you know yeah you know what i'm talking about james yeah. you're not gonna yeah. get moved but it's kind of fun regardless right yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's what that's one I I would love to revisit. The drive in, like the, the the baby boomer drive in movies. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That'd be fun. Or all Remember, about it. Has either have either one of you seen a movie at an actual drive in ever? I have not. I grew up on them. Okay. And my mom and dad and I would go and we'd sneak in our own popcorn and <laughs> snacks and stuff and yeah do the double feature and yeah yeah i love it nice what about, what about you james are you big on the on the drive-ins i didn't see a lot of stuff at the drive-in but uh but i remember the last drive-in double feature i saw as a kid uh and it was a horror movie called house of horror and the double feature part was uh, was a computer simulated. This is like you know before before the internet kind of computers. So this was like the very dawn of you know using computers to do stuff. But it was a computer simulated boxing match, uh, a hypothetical <laughs> boxing match between Rocky Marciano and Muhammad Ali, and uh. who the computer thought would win. Wow. And who did and the computer was, pick? The computer picked uh, Rocky Marciano, actually. Uh, the computer thought that Ali would land a lot of, you know, jabs and a lot of punches, but Marciano could take a lot of punches. And yeah. that eventually he would wear Ali down with body blows and, uh, and, and win on points. I wasn't sure I agreed with that even then. No. <laughs> Muhammad Ali all the way. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's funny you say that because that computer fight perhaps influenced Sylvester Stallone when doing Rocky Balboa. Oh, that could uh, be. maybe because that because that was a major plot point because they had the computer fight between the current world champ Mason Dixon and Rocky. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And Rocky, you know, say what you want about Stallone, but he's he's good when he had to be. 
in my opinion. Yeah. And then yeah. Stallone kind of got that itch again, obviously, with the passing of Adrian. And yeah, there's, some, there's still some stuff in the basement. You know, I just I love the product. <laughs> right. But but in a way, Ali influenced Rocky because of the Chuck Wepner fight. Contrary to what Stallone believes, he he said that on on an interview that mm. it was the Chuck Wepner Muhammad Ali fight that that influenced him. The Bayon, uh, the Bayon Bleeder. <laughs> yes, yes. By the way, as long as we're kind of going all over the place here, sure. Uh, if, uh, if since one or at least one of you is an Ali fan, uh, I can recommend a movie I saw recently, uh, which is called, I believe, One Night in Miami. One Night and in Miami. The the movie takes place. The night after Ali wins the heavyweight title for the first time, and it's a, it's not an easy movie to watch, uh, but I think it's really well done. Uh, it's a hypothetical meeting in a hotel room in Miami after the boxing match between Ma Muhammad Ali, Malcolm X, the soul singer Sam Cooke, and the football player Jim Brown. Oh. And they get together and 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 talk about what it's like to be a black man in America, what it's mm -hmm. like to be a celebrity, you know, who's a black man in America. Uh, and there are some really powerful, powerful interchanges between particularly Malcolm X and Sam Cooke, because Malcolm was in favor of revolution and Sam was in favor of becoming successful and using that to change society from the inside and there were some really really dynamic uh interchanges between those two characters i just thought the movie was really well done one night in miami check it yeah. out was... yeah when when was that one of your recent watches yeah uh yeah i would say about three weeks ago but it's a. Uh, I think it's streaming. That's where I saw it. So it's available out there. Nice, Marilyn. What else? What are you watching right now after Night of Adventure? What's next? Um, whatever is streaming that I can find that's new. I just watched uh, the Color Purple. Oh, uh, the new one. The new one. Oh, Which the new the, one. They remade it. Yes, it's a musical, and that sounds weird. It does. But it's not. <laughs> it's really good. Um, the talent in it is amazing. And uh, I enjoyed it thoroughly. And I watched, I've been wanting to see it. And then I, it popped up last night. So I watched it last night and it was so good. Absolutely. Did you, you saw the original? I've seen the original, yes. Okay. Well, it's kind of, I mean, it's along the same lines. It's still got that same story and stuff going on there's a little different uh takes to it a uh, little different uh little spins to a couple of the scenes and stuff but phenomenally acted and the singing and the dancing um it's i thought it was well done beautiful the color purple i like the it color purple yeah well, before we part ways, though, what are we working on now? James, I'm going to start with you. What is going on? What is the big project you're working on? Uh, I have been uh, uh, working very hard to finish up uh, some of some uh, art restoration uh, projects that I've had on my table for a little bit too long, uh, including uh, for the first time restoring a full large oil painting. Really? Uh, that's yeah, that's a bit of a new thing for me, um, but uh, but it's coming along really well. And uh, and then I'm going to be going to Utah for a little vacation to because of, there's some really beautiful uh, scenery out there. Oh yes, uh, the red, red rock formations and and so forth. So we're looking really looking forward to doing a lot of uh, hiking and and checking that out. And I've got my first convention of the year uh, coming up in April in, of all places, Boise, Idaho. Boise, Idaho. Boise, Idaho. So if you're listening out there <laughs> uh, and you live in the Boise area or you're going to be in the Boise area, 
uh, I will be attending the Gem, Gem State Comic Con. Nice. Any word from uh, back east, perhaps? Has that come your way? Because I, I may have uh, made a suggestion to a certain convention. Oh, nice. Uh, I have not heard anything as of yet. Mm -hmm. um, so Neither have I. Yeah, most of my convention uh, activities are are going to be, you know, west of the Mississippi for the at least the things I've got booked right now. Nice. But you'll be the first to know. Thank you. Boise, Idaho. Can't wait to see yeah. that. I always wanted to see it. Always wanted to go past that, like into that era, that area. Yeah. yeah. That's the Idaho is supposed to be really pretty, too. Yeah. So what about you, Marilyn? What about you, Marilyn? We're getting closer and closer to Forest Through the Trees. Yeah, that's that's the big one. That's the big project right there. That's I'm excited. Um, can't wait. Um, if if you you follow Jason Pitts, you see all oh, the yeah. posts about um, things coming along, and and uh, yeah, I'm really excited. I can't wait. Um, I contributed. I contributed money to the GoFundMe page. Oh, I directly, I directly Venmo Jason Pitts. Forest yeah. Through the Trees will be a feature that features Marilyn and several other actors and actresses and Jason Pitts who have been on this on bad for your health and uh anything he's making i'm watching because he's he's got a fantastic eye and i mm -hmm. i can't wait to see it as someone who has actually read the end and the entire script right at least i hope it's the entire script uh but there's changes but yeah uh, he's a fantastic storyteller and director and yeah just he's uh, coming back he's coming back he and i have talked about coming back and doing another good. film review or just shooting the yarn yeah that's great that's great and then um i've got i just found out that um i got some background work on thursday and then i'll be doing something on sunday and then uh that's a that's a web series and then next week on wednesday i'll be uh, back on a western a period piece so that'll oh, be cool fun. Oh, yes. very nice. Yeah. So I'm excited. Love being on set. I don't care what I do. I just want to be there. Yeah. How's the, are you still going to dabble with writing? I want to. I just don't, it, it's so hard. There's, so, there's only so many hours in the day. I, well, it, yeah. I, I have ideas. We'll see if I ever do them. <laughs> Well, if it was easy, everyone would do it, right? If That's it was, right. yeah. If That's it was right. easy, everyone would do it. We all, we all do what we can, when we can, how we can. I have a meeting next Sunday myself about a potential role that I was asked to to be, and I told both of you about that. Turns out they want uh, to do a second one, and I'm kind of that. That that was my reaction. I was like, "Where are we going? What's what are we talking about at this meeting?" And they said. X, Y, and Z. And I said, right. well, I got nothing going on. So let's see what, let's see what that's about. Yeah. But other than that, listen. nothing really. Say that again. Doesn't hurt to listen. Doesn't hurt to listen. Okay. Yeah. I'll see what's on the table, but I can't really say too much about that, but I can tell you who's coming back for bad for your health in future episodes. The only one I can say concrete Actually, I can say two. Two concrete right now. Beatrice Bupley from Nightmare on Elm Street Part 5 will be back sometime in March. Nice. And the and Jewel Cavazos will be coming back to discuss Highlander. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. If that's something that might intrigue you, you, you two are more than welcome to talk about <laughs> another limited actor, perhaps, Mr. Christopher Lambert. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. He's he's done a couple of things though that I really enjoyed, not not just Highlander but uh, the uh, Greystoke movie that he did. Greystoke, The Legend of Tarzan. Yeah, That's right. I I I wasn't as thrilled with the second half of that movie, but I thought the first half when he was in the jungle and interacting with the apes was yep. fantastic. Yeah, I loved it. Greystoke, The Legend of Tarzan. His first movie too. That's that's a big yeah. that's a big responsibility. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, it is. And in my opinion, there hasn't been a good Tarzan movie since. 
No, I don't believe there has. No, <laughs> no, no. Lambert was good, if not better than Johnny Y. Smaller, but there's only one Johnny Y. Smaller. That's right. Those there's only one. Bad I will <laughs> never say anything. I will never say anything bad about Johnny Y. Smaller because you know what? I rewatched. I went down that rabbit hole. It's the, again. A movie tough to find was were the later ones where where perhaps age had caught caught up with him, sure. but he he still had that that look the Olympian the yeah the Iron Man if you will just Johnny Weissmall I love Johnny Weissmaller yeah he was a swimmer, Johnny, right? yeah, he was an Olympic swimmer in the twenties yeah. mm -hmm. right yep. about a hundred years before Michael Phelps. <laughs> He just dominated gold medals, gold medals, gold medals, bronze medal, gold medal, gold medal. Yeah. Right. He he was like the first. I I don't want to misquote, but he was the first to do something in swimming that was sort of like ah, oh, just wow, a human being could do it. He was just right. you know, you see these pictures of him. I don't know if he was twenty nine, whatever, whatever the year the Olympics were in Berlin. Oh, it was Paris. I don't know. My history may be off, so I don't want to misspeak. But he was just a fantastic swimmer. Mm -hmm. and yeah, tarzan and tarzan yes and jungle jim he was jungle jim too back in the That's right. back in the late 1950s <laughs> i love it yeah but he had the screen presence for sure yeah he did the first the first tarzan movie i ever saw was the one where he was killing nazis in the jungle oh yeah and that's i don't know which one it was offhand but it, you know he was like lord i'm like oh nazi Nazi, you know, it was just sort of like I watched it recently. And I was just sort of, you know, <laughs> right? Nazi. <laughs> well, you know, what's wrong with killing Nazis? That's nothing right. wrong with it. Nothing wrong with it. They no. deserved it. That's right. You know, but you ever need good cannon fodder, Nazis and zombies? Yeah, yeah, they're the best. They're the best if you want to rack up a kill count. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Or the monsters, just whatever monster if you want to tell some sci-fi story. But listen, I appreciate you two coming back and talking about a night of adventure and what you're working on. Uh, don't forget to check out Still Dead Illustrations. And from all my friends in the Danielson, Connecticut region, don't forget to check out Blended It For You Nutrition. My friend Mike and his wife have a fine health shake business. Check that out if you're in the region. I would highly recommend it. Uh, from Marilyn Knapp and Mr. James Pasco, I am Tom, and we will see you soon with another episode of Bad for Your Health. Have a good night, everybody.